I did Oh, that's the forklift. I was like, why is there a huge square tube in there? <laughs> You're strong. Come on. There we go. Yeah, so we're like a half inch thick steel pipe. Eight inch diameter. Fun fact, in the past, we cut just one of these caps in half because somebody sent it to us. So, about time we do the rest. That was a fun fact, Dan. I had fun. After much effort, we were able to get it up on the table and this is what we came up with. We actually took a bunch of our slats, the roughest looking ones, and we cut an eight inch diameter circle that was about two inches in from the top of the slot. That way, when we stick the hydrant on it, like so, it's now two inches lower, which means we can get over that top just barely. We've got like an eighth inch of spare room. And so, the original plan that we wanted to try and do if we could figure out a way, is to cut it just from top to bottom in half. And that's what we're gonna try and do. I approve. It's gonna be a long cut. You start the cut, I'm gonna get some pizza. Okay. <laughs> Weird black stuff in the water makes me think we cut through some kind of rubber gasket. Which I'm sure there is it, like these connections and up here even. I think we're through here. Up here, this is where we had technical difficulties. And so it missed a spot right there for sure. Down this side. Minutes. Feels pretty good in there. There's a spot maybe right here. I do remember it sputtering right there. I'm gonna do a few more cleanup cuts and then we'll uh, roll it over and do the other side. Because of the way that I filmed this, it'll be hard to show the time code of how long this took, but this first half right here took 39 minutes, I think is what it was. It's lengthy. 39 minutes for one half of this. I think our previous record on cut time was, it was like 50 minutes, maybe? That's what my memory said. Yeah. So, this has got it beat, but we're not done yet. Fun fact, on the first time lapse, if you see where the water is like really bubbling, that means the water jet went all the way through and is churning up the water. And that's where it went through. And also right there, I guess I went a little too slow. We had no idea how thick that was. I was guessing like two inches thick, but apparently not. Or you were just too slow for two inches thick. That too. I did the cooler half. Which has, oh, this top half will be cooler because it's got two of the ports on it and the other half's only gonna have one port. Hmm. Should have been here. You called dibs, I gotta have you, I gotta let you have it. Total cut time on that was, I mean, we don't have an exact number, but it's well over an hour. It's a movie. That looks promising. Probably still weighs a crap ton. Oh yeah, there's some thick things in there that we were cutting through. We still didn't get through one of them. Holy. We lost that. <laughs> <laughs> At least we know right where it is. <laughs> I cannot believe we actually made it through that. That's insane. So 
this is what we've got. You've got the boring half, but still kind of cool. That's my half, I think. <laughs> it is, because it's the one that's got the two outlets. <laughs> you dibs it, you get it. We thought this was just like set on there, but that bolt right there is what was holding it on. And that one. And bolts. then this bolt right there holds this half on, but we cut through that one, so that's why that side's a little floppy. Looks like they've got a dual seal. So this is what you turn to turn the water on. This turns this entire shaft, which then goes eight feet into the ground and then turns the valve and opens it. The water then rushes in, comes up, and then you want it to go out your holes and not leaking through that, that, uh, that's your nose. that thing. What? I think it's called a nose. Don't want the milk to come out the nose. <laughs> so this is the first disc that they have in here to keep that water pressure that way and it's resting on a on like a shoulder so it looks like this even rotated in there that's why i didn't cut it in half because this moved yeah so the first time we cut it we got about that far coming from that direction and then this direction we got about that far we almost made it and then the second seal to keep water from shooting out the top is this one which this one is bolted to that, and I'm sure there's All some the kind of... All the way around, there's bolts that bolts that to Yeah, and I'm sure there. there's some kind of gasket material right there that's sealing it. And then yeah, I don't know what kind of... There. Yeah, there's the gasket. And then I don't know what kind of seal they have inside the turny part to make sure that doesn't leak. We'll, we'll never know. <laughs> Turn the water on. That rotates that. And that goes all the way down to a valve in the ground. This area probably fills up with water because that does not look watertight. Yeah, I think this is more just kind of curved and domed to direct the flow outwards. Yeah, probably. It's the last set screw, which means this should pull out. Now we can cut this in half the normal way. Down on the ground, though, it'd be really loud. Like that. 1962 is when this fire hydrant was made and installed, which explains why all of those bolts were such a beast to get off. But now we have this cool cross section. And we are also now launching the start of our fire hydrant cutting in half business. <laughs> if you've got a spare fire hydrant laying around, send it to 735 West 200 North, North Salt Lake, Utah, and we will cut it for you. For a low, low fee of $500 and 99 cents. That's just the cutting. So you gotta provide your own fire hydrant. And return shipping. <laughs> and return shipping.